Hey guys, my name is Dave and I've got an itch in my eye. What a great way to start a video, eh? Welcome to another episode of History Talk, where I take a group, icon, idol, or individual, look at how its history lines up, and discuss how it impacts me today. For this episode, I have decided to look into a specific very past historical holiday, I looked into it and went, what, how does its origin impact me? And since we are the closest to this, this particular holiday, I decided to aim towards Halloween. Or more accurately, the Celtic Festival of Samhain. Not many people know what this is, but that particular festival on its own in a sense, it's kind of like a cult. Um, but the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, the reason I say it's like a cult is because what they used to do, what we each kid does on Halloween, they used to do that to ward off ghosts. Now, in a sense, this does kind of sound like a cult. And in a way, by description, it pretty much is. Regardless, for those who don't know, the Celtic Festival of Samhain is how Hallow's Eve started. As I just described, they used to dress up in costumes, light bonfires, which I didn't mention before, and this is how they would ward off the ghosts, doing both of these. That's why I kind of say it's kind of like a cult, because that's basically what people do nowadays. Except it's not a bonfire, it's like those weird devil star things. Um, one way or the other, though, there were three aspects involved in these cults, which is what I'm going to refer to these as. One, the ancient Celtics would, as I've already said, light a bonfire. Two, as I've already said, they would dress in costume. But three, to help emphasize on the warding, they would use jack-o'-lanterns. Kind of started as just lit pumpkins, but over time, you know, it became to look it came to look like the jack-o'-lanterns that we all know and love today. But that being said, over time, as we all know, Hallow's Eve, which is what it was referred to back then, came to be Halloween, where it was more celebratory, just for the heck of it, goof off kind of thing. Just because, I mean, we're talking about something that existed in the 8th century. This was a long time ago. But Halloween, now that it's been evolved into what it is, how does what happened then impact me specifically? Especially since for me, I have not really truly celebrated Halloween in any kind of way for the past nine years. Maybe eight. This is a good question to lay out. The Celtic Festival, it was... The reason I say it's a cult is just because of the actions, but it was led by a man named Pope Gregory the Third. Now, at the time, it was not specifically October 31st. It was kind of the cross between the 31st and November 1st, which is kind of why Hallow's Eve and Halloween are still on the same night. People, would, people have speculated that Hallow's Eve, for some reason, people have speculated that Hallow's Eve is referring to the night before Halloween. It's not. It's the night of Halloween transitioning over to November 1st. Which not a lot of people know. Except people look at it as it's called Hallow's Eve, it's all Hallow's Eve. But Hallow's Eve is more fun to say. Let's just be realistic here. One way or the other. Once again, how does this impact me today? Well, as much as I don't conform with this kind of stuff very often, the times I do, I may not dress up. 
I may not go to haunted houses very frequently. I actually have other reason for the haunted houses one. I may not go trick or treating anymore. I mean, for heaven's sake, I'm twenty. I'm twenty seven years old. What do you expect? I'm not gonna go trick or treating at twenty seven. Maybe when I have kids, yeah, but right now, no. So, with all that being said, once again, how does this impact me, IRL? It's simple. Family time. Just as I said with the kids that I would have in the future. Family time. A good example is this. In adaption, over time, Halloween evolved into the kind of thing it is today, where you go trick-or-treating carving pumpkins that, you know, used to be these wards. You, you, they, the, the festivities, like going into corn mazes or haunted houses. Well, all this does core from what the idea originally was. Nobody ever thinks of it that way anymore, but it does. But these particular activities, all of them have one thing in common outside of that. Family time. Something that I cherish every single time I do. And every... In fact, later on... This is being recorded on a Sunday. Later on today, I plan on visiting family. With Amber. She, at this point, she even considers them that, which I am very happy about. And the one thing that happens every single October. We always do certain events. Pumpkin carving. At a point, at points we would usually go to, uh, like, uh, festivities, like like carnival type things. Um, or you go to one specific one, and not many people know about it. So it's called Cornbillies, I believe. It's been a while. My brain is stupid, so let, I'm just assuming. But these activities. If it wasn't for doing them with my family, I wouldn't do them at all. But if it wasn't for the events that happened back in the 8th century, you probably wouldn't be doing them at all either. It would be less time with my family. And that's something I don't even like thinking about nowadays. I can't think of a time where I wouldn't want that, but... At the same time... With that subsided, thanks to this said fest, Celtic fest, the ancient Celtic festival of Samhain, because the events that they brought on exist, went down, there have been founded reasons for me specifically to spend more time with my family. And that is something I will always cherish. Every historical figure Every historical event always brings on some kind of optimistic retraction for me. And that is something that I will always cherish. Especially when it's something like this. So, that is how the Celtic Festival of Samhain has impacted my life in a very optimistic way. How about you guys? Do you have any kind of festivals or any kind of connected holidays that has impacted your life in a positive way without directly impacting involvement in the direct holiday on its date itself. Because that's something I'm also trying to avoid doing. Let me know in the comments below. If you liked this video though, make sure to push that like button and so far you can't see it anymore. And if you really liked it, please consider subscribing to the channel. Because um, we are going to start doing these kind of videos on a daily basis alongside Nostalgia Rides Down the Gaming aspect. Speaking of, uh, as far as this channel goes, if you do want to check out any of the other videos in this particular list, click the link on this side of my head. But if you want to check out anything that might suit your fancy, if it's outside of that, or who knows, maybe it might pop up as that anyway, click the link on this side where it'll show you what video suits you best. If you have not checked the channel itself out yet, please consider doing so in the link below my head and in the description below. In the meantime, I'm going to head off. Thank you guys once again for watching this episode of History Talk, and I hope to catch all of you in another video. See you guys later.